I'm Indu Varshini. In this short video, I'll walk you through how we can detect fraudulent insurance claims using Neo4j's graph analytics engine, right from within Snowflake. First of all, why fraud detection matters? Did you know that insurance fraud costs the United States a little over $300 billion annually? This translates to each family paying $400 to $700 more in premiums every year. Moreover, 80% of insurers now rely on predictive models to screen claims, yet sophisticated fraud rings still slip through. This underscores the value of graph-based analytics that can reveal hidden network in real time. So now let's see how to do graph analytics in Snowflake. Our approach is simple and powerful. Load your tabular data into Snowflake, choose from a suite of graph algorithms provided by Neo4j, and then write the results back into Snowflake tables for easy querying and additional analysis. All of this runs on a pay-as-you-go serverless engine that benchmarks up to twice as fast as any other open source graph solution. Here's a quick overview of the architecture. We start with your raw data in standard Snowflake tables. Then we spin up a compute session behind the scenes. Snowflake projects your data into graph using a SQL query that you provide. Then the graph analytics engine runs various algorithms asynchronously. Finally, write the results back into Snowflake tables and you could use this for any dashboards, alerts or deeper analysis. Once you're done with your session, make sure to tear down the session with a single call so you only pay for what you actually used. Before we deep dive into the demo notebook, I wanted to take a moment to talk about the FAST RP algorithm. FAST RP stands for Fast Random Projection. So the core of FAST um, RP algorithm is to transform a high dimensional graph into low dimensional vectors that capture how each node is connected. The goal is to preserve similarity Essentially, nodes that behave similarly should get similar vectors. So how does this work? Let's look at a small example. Imagine comparing 1000 people's preferences across 100 media figures. That's a 100 dimensional problem. Comparing 1000 people in a 100 dimensional space becomes slow and expensive. To overcome this, we use a random projection matrix to shrink it to something manageable, like 10 dimensions, while preserving the structure. So we'll multiply the original data by this random projection matrix. This gives us a thousand cross 10 matrix where each person is now a 10D vector. So random projection preserves distances between points with minimal distortion. This makes comparisons much faster while still being meaningful. We have now transformed a high dimensional behavior into compact embeddings. Let's take a toy example to understand how fast RP works in a graph setting. Here is an example of three nodes, A, B, and C, with the following edges. To run the fast RP, we need two things, data matrix and random projection matrix. To ensure we capture both the position and the connections of a node, we'll start by representing the position of a node in a smaller space. We begin by one hot encoding the graph's position, as we see here, into a three cross three matrix. We are looking to transform the matrix into two dimension. To achieve this, we take a random matrix of size three cross two, and this will be our random projection matrix. We took the size here to be three cross two because there are three nodes in our graph. We then multiply our H matrix with the R matrix to, to end up with a matrix called E. Now we have captured the position of the nodes in this matrix. We will move on to capturing the connections of, an, connections of nodes. We begin by creating an adjacency matrix. Basically, wherever there is a connection between the nodes, we assign one to that position in the matrix. We use the same random projection matrix from step one to multiply that with the adjacency matrix. We do that for all nodes A, B, and C, and we finally arrive at a matrix A, which is of size 3 cross 2. So, in the third step, 
we'll do a reprojection of the matrix generated in step 2. That is, by multiplying it again with a random projection matrix. This allows us to inject randomness, reduce correlation between features, and retain efficiency, all while keeping the embedding space compact and meaningful. So once we multiply the A matrix with the R matrix, we end up with the matrix E. Now, the final step is to bring it, bring it all together. Remember, in step 1, we created 2D vectors for position of nodes, and in the last step, we created 2D vectors for the connection between the nodes. We'll combine both these matrices with a weighted sum. We'll assign 1 to our position matrix from step 1 and 0.8 to our neighbor's matrix from the last step. Once we do the matrix multiplication for each of these nodes, we'll end up with our refined embeddings for each nodes. Now, we have reduced the high dimension of the graph to a very small dimension. Let's take a deep dive into the Snowflake notebook. We begin by loading our data into the iDemo database. You can find the data set here. Further documentation on how to upload the data can be found here. We'll begin by setting up some permissions for using the Snowflake account. So one needs to be on an account admin role to run, to run the various commands in this notebook. We also set up some permissions. And then we start using those permissions and roles for running this data. So for our insurance claim data, these are the possible nodes that can be created and some example relationships that we'll be creating for the purposes of this demo. We begin by creating the different node tables. For ECR analysis, we'll be merging the node tables into all nodes table. This is how our all nodes table look like. Now we'll begin by creating the above mentioned relationship tables. Once these relation table, relationship tables are created, we'll combine them into a one big relationship table for easier analysis. Let's look at how our relationship table looks like. So this is our source node and this is our target node. Now, our data is loaded. Let's quickly see what are the different algorithms we will be running on this insurance claim to find our fraudulent claims. First, we'll begin by running the weekly connected competence algorithm. So for the purposes of this demo, we'll be using this algorithm to find out hidden networks of the insurance claims. So we are running the WCC algorithm here. This is the results. So we see that we have 1033 nodes and it's connected as a single component. This means that there is no clearly separated fraud rings or isolated groups, which means further analysis and investigation is required. So here we will be using the fast RP algorithm that we learned earlier in this video. We'll be running the fast RP algorithm to reduce our high, high dimension claims data into lower dimension. Once we have the embeddings, we'll be running the K nearest neighbors to find how similar each of these nodes are to each other. Here we are running the fast RP algorithm with a single line of code. You will be able to run the fast RP algorithm all within the snowflake itself. This is the results of our fast RP algorithm. So the algorithm took all to, took our all nodes table and our all relationship table and has and has reduced the higher dimension into a very small dimension. Now with this embeddings, we will be running the k nearest neighbors algorithm to find how similar each of these nodes are to each other. So if the result is one, which means that they are highly similar. If it's zero they are not similar. And if it's minus one, they are complete opposites. So the same way we are running the algorithm. So this is how the results look like. We can see some of the nodes have really high, sim high similarity scores, almost near to one, which means 
there's a high possibility there that they could be fraudulent claims. Let's uh, quickly use our visualization procedure to see how these nodes look like. It's much easier to visualize these in a high dimension. We'll be doing some pre-processing for easier visualization. This is how we run our visualization procedure. We'll be providing the source table and the target table. Since our claims data already has a fraud reported column, we'll be seeing how already connected fraudulent nodes connect to non-fraudulent nodes. The yellow nodes are fraudulent nodes and the purple nodes are non-fraudulent nodes. Here you can see some of the fraudulent nodes are connected to non-fraudulent nodes. This requires us to be more cautious about these interactions and these are very highly similar connections, which means that the non-fraudulent could be potentially a fraudulent claim. Here, we are looking at claims that were previously not marked as fraud, but using our KNN algorithm, we scored those to be very similar to claims marked as fraud. And from this, we generate a list of potentially fraudulent claims for deeper investigation. That's the end of the demo. Thank you for watching.